everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Tim Martino, Service Manager for Pavement Technologies. Today we're going to do a walkthrough demonstration of our Stratos Distributor Trailer. This happens to be a 600 gallon unit. It's mounted onto a Ford F550 chassis. And uh, we're going to go over some of the functions today, show you how to spray out of the spray bar in the back, um, how to use the sealing wand as well. There's a chart of valves positioning back there. You can put the valves in various positions to get the spray function that you want. Uh, so first off, we'll get started by turning the uh, power on from this switch here. We'll give you power here from the battery box when it's on the engine location. Once we get the electric motor start, the uh, motor started in the back there, we'll turn it to vehicle so all our charging power comes from the uh, battery of the truck. So your next step here will be to turn the motor on. Now our pump is spinning and we have the valves open already in the um, position so that the material starts recirculating, comes out of the tank through the number seven valve up there and recirculates back to the tank. Um, now we also have the spray bar valve open because we have a remote control that links to uh, valve number seven. And what that does is allow you to click a button and I'll go get the controller now so that you can switch between recirculating back to tank and allowing the material to come out of the spray bar. So I'll just open up two valves for right now. This is a uh, six foot bar with three foot extensions on each side. So it'll fold down and be a 12 foot bar altogether. And literally all you have to do is press a button and that'll give you the spray that you want. Hit it again to turn it off. And now we're recirculating back to the tank. You can open up every valve here and that'll allow material to come out of every valve. So what I'll do is I'll actually fold the bar down and we'll show it spraying out of all 12 nozzles. Just a simple wing nut to get these to fold down. Now once again, I'll hit the button and we will get spray action out of all 12 nozzles. Now upon clicking that button when you're in the driver's seat, there's an LED light that slides out here. And that'll show you whether the uh, spray bar is on or off when you click the button on the remote. So right now we're spraying, the green light is on. You'll be able to see that from the mirror of the truck. We'll click it off. Now the valve's off. We're no longer spraying, we're recirculating back to the tank. Close these valves off again. Now, what I'm going to do is allow the material to come from the tank into our spray wand on this hose here. So that is valve six that's open right now. And in order to regulate the pressure that comes out of the spray wand, we use valve five up here on the top. If it's fully closed, you're getting max pressure to the spray wand. You crack it open a little bit, it allows some of the material to recirculate back to the tank. And as you can see, we're spraying out of the wand now. And I can regulate the pressure up top by turning valve five like I just showed you. So that'll be nearly no pressure and that'll be full pressure there. Now the spray wand also has two valves of its own. This will cut it off. And if there's no, you don't want any drippage here at the tip, you turn the valve off at the end. Uh, this also has, you know, the burner controls are here at the back of the tank. This will turn the blower on. We actually want to ignite it. You put that switch, and now we're burning. The 
this is what's heating the material inside of the tank. So now we're always recirculating, we're constantly keeping this material moving. Um, now when you're done with the job at the end of the day, you can't just leave the material inside of the machine or in the spray bar or the sealing wand. So what you're going to want to do is use your uh, valve chart as a reference and we're going to go to, um, you know, we'll seal off any material coming out of the tank and we'll pump it forward, keeping anything that's in the lines back to the tank and any residuals, we will turn off that valve that returns to the tank and we'll pump the stuff out of these lines. So as you can see, there's a nice labeled chart here. Any space where there's not an opened, there's a chart here that says blank means closed position. So right now we're going to clean everything out of these lines, which means we're going to have to turn off any material coming out of the tank, which is valve one. As you can see, valve one is material from tank. Here's the main tank suction. Valve two is the solvent suction line. So when you want to get solvent introduced into the system, we will open this, uh, not at this time. This is our emulsion fill line. So you can fill from here with a hose or through the top of the machine. Uh, valve four is our strainer suction line. So anything that passes through either the main tank line or the fill line has to go through the strainer first to catch any debris before it goes into the pumping system. So we're going to want to get any residual material out of these lines before we can put any solvent into them. So I'll crack these valves open. I'm going to allow any remaining material to come out of these lines and out of the spray bar. Now, if this were an asphalt product, you get as much out as you can. You would use like a five gallon bucket and uh, whatever low end of the uh, spray bar is here, if you're on a slant, you would just go to the lowest end, turn the other valves off and allow the material to drain into a five gallon bucket or another suitable container. Now, being that we're on a flat surface here, I'll open all the valves, let this material, uh, in this case water, drain out of these spray bar valves. <coughs> and after that time, I'm going to go up and I'm going to close the valve for return to tank and allow everything that's in the system to be pushed out of the valves for the spray bar, uh, for the ceiling wand as well. So number six is for the ceiling wand. I've got nothing going to that right now. I've got every bit of pump pressure going to this spray bar. Now turn off the valve for return to tank. So there's nothing in that line. So we're pumping right now and any of the air pressure is pumping that water out of the spray bar. Now I can turn off the spray bar valve because we're not, we don't have any residual material left. Now I'm gonna open up the valve to the ceiling wand once again and allow any residual material in this line to be pumped out of here. All right, so that looks good. I've got no material coming out of anywhere. Now what I'll do is close off all the valves. because We're going to introduce solvent into our system now. If this were asphalt, hot asphalt would still be in here. You know, not every drip would come out. That's why we use the solvent. That's going to allow us to really clean out the system. So up here on our chart, our solvent recirculation, we're going to have valve one closed, which it is. Valve two is now going to be opened. And that's where we're going to draw our solvent from. Valve three is closed. Valve four is open. Five is closed. Six is closed. Seven is closed. And then eight will be opened. The valve 8 is our uh, solvent return line. 
need to now open this up. Closed, closed, closed. Now we'll open up this and we'll start recirculating solvent through this system. This is our solvent tank, by the way. But whatever solvent is suitable for the material that you're using. And right now we're just flushing out the lines. Now with the solvent, you're going to want to run it through each one of these valves. So we'll take a five gallon bucket and let some of the solvent run through the valves for a moment. That way we ensure that our solvent has gone through each one of the tips and that there's not going to be any clogs on the next day. Once again, you'll have to hit your remote fob to turn them on. There's our solvent. We'll go to the next one. And the next. 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 Okay, now our spray bar has been flushed out. We can turn off valve that allows the material to run to the spray bar. Now we're going to do our sealing wand. Same thing, just let a little bit of the material come out of the end of the sealing wand. that. Now the ceiling wand has been flushed out. So now the valve to the spray bar is off, the valve to the ceiling wand is off. Uh, we have solvent, residual solvent inside of the ceiling wand and the spray bar. And what we'll do is we'll leave that in there overnight so that it can really soak into any residual material that's been laying in there. Now there is a solvent recovery operation where you can take any solvent that's in the system and pump it out of this line into a you know, waste oil drum or container. And you just have to hook up hose to this line here. Uh, 
Uh, this number nine valve is your discharge valve. You want to discharge material off of the back end of the machine. I'll close off my solvent, let any residual solvent in the lines through this plumbing go back to the solvent tank. We're not drawing anything else in from the solvent now. So if we take a look right here, <laughs> while we're in the machine, this here is a, a, a gear that spins while the pump is turning via belt drive, and there's a proximity sensor in there, and that's what gives you your pump speed. When we go inside the cab, we'll take a look at the monitor, and that'll tell us how much uh, material we're pumping through this pump here based on the engine's RPMs. So I'm just going to clear the rest of this solvent out of these lines. I'm taking all of it out of the wand and then the rest of it out of the spray bar. We've only run water through here so this will be um, solvent only. It won't be required to fit in the line. And there's not much left in there after recirculation. Okay, now all the solvent has run out of the spray bar and the ceiling wand. It's just pumping air through the system now out of the end of this, this tip. And now while that's flushing out, we'll go into the cab of the truck. Switch this over to vehicle. This is our Danfoss controller, which is going to be monitoring our rate of material being sprayed, how many gallons per minute we're pumping. So here's our first screen, we just click OK. We're going to go to spray. It has a memory function where it'll save settings that you've uh, 
it, it'll save the track of what you've been spraying like up to the last recent eight times. Uh, so we're going to go to 12 foot spray bar, which is, has 12 sealing tips on this machine. Our target rate is between 0 0.10 gallons per yard squared all the way up to 0 0.50 gallons per yard squared. We'll go up to 0.15. Click OK. Now this gives us our bar width on the top, our target rate, which is what we put in at the beginning there, is 0.15 gallons per yard squared. Then our pump speed, so right now our pump is running at 22.5 gallons per minute. It may fluctuate up and down a point or two, uh, but our, our average is about 22 and a half gallons per minute. Um, this is the previously recorded spray distance from the last time we were spraying, uh, how many gallons that we sprayed. Now our actual rate, is 0.25 gallons per minute. Our target speed for the truck moving is 113 feet per minute. And our actual speed, now that we're parked, is zero feet per minute. So that's a difference of 113. So we need to match our actual speed to our target speed, which will give us a, a number that is zero here. and what your real concern is, is the actual rate of the material that you're laying on the ground. So if these two are matched up and there's no difference in them, you will hit your target rate on point. So we need to travel 113 feet per minute to hit that. So if we slowly drive here, now this is based on a radar that's attached to the bottom of the machine. So the radar is reading the ground speed about 24 inches above the ground and it gives a 24 inch spread oval location. So we're a little bit fast right now. But as you see the actual rate, even if you're close to the target speed, is just about where you want to be. So we speed up, that actual rate's going to go down. If we slow down, the actual rate is going to go up. So you want to be right about on that target speed. We can also control the spray from here. So instead of using your remote, you can turn the spray bar on via this switch. That's off, that's on, and that's off. So there is a manual backup in case the remote, for some reason the battery dies or anything like that. You can control the spray bar from here inside the cab. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll take another step outside. I'll just show you that the, there's a compressor. Actually, if we go through the back window here, there's a compressor located right on this machine. It's the blue Puma compressor. That's what gives you the uh, air pressure to control valve number seven in the back, which opens and closes the valve via the remote, which you can turn on the spray bar with that. And then over there to the left is a Dwyer instrument. That's a thermostat for the burner. It tells you how much your temperature is. We got our diesel fuel tank in yellow, solvent tank in green, battery box in black. There is another control box out there. Uh, for this machine, we've located this monitor inside of the cab. So we uh, did a little bit to relocate that so it's ease of access for the driver. He doesn't have to worry about how fast he's going. He can literally see it right in front of him. And other than that, that's it. If there's any questions, please don't hesitate to call us, 518-218-7676. Thanks.